why banks are stopping you from withdrawing your own money. Yeah, banks are getting real sneaky with certain tactics on what you can withdraw. We even did a video right here about TD Bank, how they changed their policy, and a lot of people didn't even know about it, on when you can withdraw, how much you can withdraw. And we all know, we don't really go into the bank anymore unless we have to do like a large withdrawal, but that's going to change. They usually divert you to the ATM. Hey, go take it out of the ATM, but you only can take a certain limit out of ATMs. Most ATMs in the metropolitan area hold about ten to $15,000. After that, they're done till the next business day. But these same banks, would gladly write you a loan, a home mortgage, or even a credit card. They'll open up the account for you with high interest rates. They'll gladly do that. But when you go to talk to them and you try to get your own money out, they give you the runaround. Case in point, look at this story from Australia that went viral of a young lady that needed some cash for home repairs. Watch this video and then come back and we'll give you an idea on what might be going on, why the banks are doing this, and you should be paying very close attention to this. So I am getting some renos done at home and I needed three and a half thousand dollars cash. So I went to the bank, but I didn't have my physical card. I thought, oh, that's fine. I'll just go to the teller. The teller proceeds to tell me they don't have cash in the bank anymore. You can only get it out through the, through the ATM. But she said, don't worry, I'll set your card up so you can just tap it in place of your card. I said, oh, okay, great. Anyway, she'd done her bit on the computer and she came with me to the teller to make sure everything was fine and it just kept giving an error message. It wouldn't even let me get to the point to put my pin in. When I tapped it, it just gave this error message and she said, I'm really sorry, there's nothing we can do. I was like, what do you mean? I need to get my, my money out of my bank account. And she was like, yeah, really sorry. Like we don't carry cash here. Um, she said, if you've got another bank, you can transfer your money to, you can try it with them. Luckily for me, I am with another bank, so I transferred every single penny out of that account, closed the account while I was there, and went and got my money out at another bank. But it just got me thinking about our banking system and where we're at, and how the hell can you go to a bank and not access your own money? It's a good question. And now we're going to get into why these guys are rubbing their hands together every time you make a deposit into the bank. But first, you made it this far. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button because we're going to get in depth on what's going on with the banking system and why these guys are celebrating every year, making huge bonuses. But if they're not careful, it could be real big trouble coming up for everyone if certain things happen. So let's get into what's required with banks and narrow deposit. As you can see right here, banks are required to have 10% of reserves, meaning they can lend out 90% as loans or as investments. Here's a good illustration on what that looks like. You go to your bank and you deposit $2,000 right there. It goes into the bank and then based on rules, they need to hold at least 10% of that, but the rest of it they can lend out to Linda. So they lend that money out to Linda, right? They lend out $1,800 of your money uh, to Linda. But when you open up your account, you see $2,000 there, but really it's minus $200. So you only really have $200 there. So this is the current law, but let me show you something that's going to shock you and show you why. If things go bad, they're going to go really bad. And that's why we had three banks fail in one month in 2023. Take a look at this. The Federal Reserve Board reduced banking reserve requirements to zero. Yeah, you heard that right. Zero in March of 2020. Since, since that time, banks in the United States have not been required to actually hold any depositors' money in the bank, making a flawed system, fractionally reserved banking, worse. So you want to ask yourself, what is fractional reserve banking? We're going to take a look at that right now. We kind of showed you that example. Let's go back to that example right now so you can see the picture now. Okay, back to the same illustration. First off, we were saying before you go ahead and deposit your money in the bank, $2,000, they lend it out to Linda. Linda gets $1,800 loan from you, but now the bank doesn't have to have that, you know, that 10% in the the account. They can lend Linda the whole $2,000. But what the banks are doing now, since that came into play, they're not trusting Linda too much. Linda might lose her job, and then they're on the line for $2,000 because they're going to lend the whole thing out. So they're on the line for $2,000. So now, case in point, if you try to get a loan, it's a little bit harder now, right? So they're not lending it out to Linda anymore. What they're doing now is they're buying back their own stock. They're going out and leveraging up this $2,000 and leverage up to five, ten times that. Buying, guess what? Commercial property. How's that doing right now? Going out and buying stock. How's that doing right now? Listen, this is why this is so dangerous. And let me show you that example in plain English right here. Here's the example. You go to the bank, you deposit $2,000. 
central bank has to hold uh they can lend out 90 percent they can get uh they have to um hold 10 percent and you get the scenario afterwards the 18 percent goes to lender and then you know so on and so on and they pay out interest on that money but remember they're taking Linda out of the process because they don't trust Linda anymore because Linda might lose a job. So now they're going out buying stock and they're going out buying commercial real estate or lending on commercial real estate like malls. There's a whole bunch of malls that went bankrupt and those loans are leveraged up. Now you can see why when you walk in and ask for your money back or you ask for, hey, let me withdraw some cash. That's why they look at you. Hey, uh, let, let me get right back to you. This is what's going on and why this is so dangerous. You need to be real careful. If you don't have your cash in your hands, guess what? It might not be there. A major owner, mall owner that is, is filing for bankruptcy. Washington Prime Group owns more than 100 locations across the country and it has filed for Chapter 11, citing the pandemic created significant challenges to its operation. Some stores that were at Washington Prime Malls had also filed for bankruptcy earlier this year, including JCPenney, Steinmart, and Tuesday Morning. CoreSight Research estimates that one in four malls will eventually go out of business in the next three to five years. In Lee County, officials tell us there will be no impact to operations, including leasing and property management at Edison Mall. Today, Carroll founder and CEO Patrick Carroll, whose company manages more than 33,000 multifamily units across nine states. Patrick, great to have you. Um, those are big words. Uh, talk about what needs to crack in order for us to get to that end point. Uh, you know, and unfortunately, in that in this situation we're in, things have to bottom out and they haven't bottomed out yet. I was just reading there's one point five trillion dollars of debt maturing on commercial real estate and then by twenty twenty five. So sellers are not realizing how much their properties have lost value and they're not willing to dump their properties yet because they haven't felt enough pain. They're about to start feeling pain. These lenders are spooked. There's no lending going on. There's no transactions going on. Uh, and it's going to be ugly. I mean, it's going to be at least as bad as 0809. People don't want to say that. But it's, it, you know, downturns always are worse than the one before. And upturns are always better. I've rode the wave of, of price appreciation, rent growth, things like that since 2011. Well, the party's over, unfortunately. It's going to be okay in multifamily, but the office market is going to be destroyed. You know, hotels are going to be destroyed. It's going to be ugly. Yeah. Well, now now you mentioned 0809 when we, we really were talking about residential exposure. It will be different in the respect now that you're really looking at CRE, right? Yeah, but I mean, you know, when people start handing the keys back on their mortgages because they can't pay the interest on them, you know, you see your neighbor, you know, get his house foreclosed on. You see your neighbor sell for 20 percent less than you bought the property for. People start walking away from their houses. It happened, you know, 08, 09. You know, that was what caused the downturn. People thought the housing market was too big to fail. No one would ever bet against the housing market. Well, we saw people give their keys back. If you lose your job and you can't pay your mortgage, you're going to walk away. 